G'day. Going to try to go through this crop alley here. Agroforestry. And try to describe what's going on. So in the middle is a crop row that will hold tomatoes, ginger, beans. Ginger at 100%, beans at 100%, and tomatoes near enough. But the different strata and life cycle enables them to grow together in the same place. Um, what we've done is we've harvested the biomass off the two outside beds and put it in the tree crops, the alleys, uh, the, sorry, the, um, the tree rows. Um, I'm going to try to describe what's in those tree rows without missing anything. I don't know if I will or not. There's a lot going on in there. But uh, we've taken down the biomass and used it to maintain those tree rows. Previously, we cut the heads out of the eucalypts and used the biomass, which you can kind of see through there. But uh, we've <clears throat> provided the biomass in situ we haven't externalized that task we have imported the biomass for the middle bed um, and we will grow more biomass in the two outside beds along with beans and okra so we'll plant guinea grass, a panicum variety, in there. And then by combining strata and life cycle, we'll be able to crop beans and okra. And then the guinea grass will then grow uh, and take the place of the beans once the beans have moved out of the way, but the beans growing faster will be beneficial to nursing the guinea grass seeds to um, give it that protection that it needs to establish. And the guinea grass is still happy to grow under the okra. Kind of like pasture cropping in a way. It'll be more like pasture cropping once we um, come into winter and we cut back the guinea grass and use it as biomass and then we'll put a pea crop, drill that into the guinea grass. So we're still cropping the two outside beds that will be continually providing biomass for the whole system because it's a whole system. It's not just a, a, a combination of individual crops because together it forms a macro organism with the plants all communicating to each other um, via the soil food web, the fungal network, gibberellic acid and what not. All right, so I'll go on to describe a little bit about the consortiums in this tree row. Um, we have our early cycle emergence, um, Grevillea robusta and Eucalyptus grandis. Of course, banana. Banana everywhere, so every two metres is a, um, a, an emergent, fast growing, productive emergent, and every four metres is a banana, and in between those are our citrus, which are just coming in now, they're, uh, this is the second year, so our citrus are going to start really moving in and cropping. They're a type of a sort of up to the three to four, five year mark of focus crop for us. But we've gone through a big pruning cycle and stimulated a growth pulse, and everything's looking very healthy, of course, from that. Um, 
this type of agroforestry is very precise. Management is key. Um, it's like a, like a race car in a way that you've got to really be onto it. There's not much uh, tolerance for uh, mistakes once those mistakes happen because everything's so closely planted together you can get over positioning and senescence very quickly so you've got to be very very precise with your management to get the best results but when you do you get really really spectacular results so management is key um, so on that cycle we brought light down and we planted on that again because we created a um, a new successional new successional conditions here where light came back down there was nutrients became available after being released from a heavy prune and those nutrients need to be taken up again with lower succession plants like zucchini uh, these zucchini have been we're just starting to get fruit now. Uh, there's been an interesting observation here with the zucchini. Zucchini is a medium strata. It doesn't need the full sun. It can tolerate the full sun, but that, that light is wasted. The excess light is wasted. So, But the negative feedbacks do start when you get very, very hot weather, which we've had if you're out in the open sun. But what's happened is... Got a young black bean there coming up. It's going to probably take the place of this grevillea once it's gone. Uh, but what's happened with these zucchini is uh, we've had some yeah extremely hot weather, and we didn't get any wilting whatsoever. And these 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 uh, plants have hardly been watered. I think they were watered once three days ago, and that was just because we watered the tomatoes that were in the other row, and they got a bit of uh, water from that. But they really they haven't been watered um, and they're, they're fruiting well um, <clears throat> but this is this is where we want to be this is what we want to see here uh, we've got a full uh, we've got su succession completely uh, uh, in place um, and we've got a good combination of strata and life cycle so We've got on the other side there a uh, medium strata short life cycle crop of beans which um, are over the top of, as you can see right down there, a medium strata longer life cycle crop of pineapple. So the pineapple doesn't need that light at this point. And the beans are nursing the pineapple. They both benefit each other. And behind that, combining strata, we've got high strata, shorter life cycle crop there of tomatillo. But in between each tomatillo are cassava, which are a high strata but longer life cycle, up to one year. And so the, what will happen is the beans will move out, the tomatillo will move out, the cassava will really start to move in and occupy that space and it will grow in combination with that pineapple very well they grow very well together and then once we cut out that cassava they'll bring the light back down to the pineapple and trigger the flowering of the pineapple and then we'll get fruit fruit will start to develop after that so our biomass production we're quite happy with. We're really happy with the state of the soil, the way it's developed. No fertiliser, just an input of biomass from using succession to generate biomass and cycle back to the ground. And then the plants will work together to uh, share growth signals. And the soil just keeps getting better and better and better.
There's also young jackfruit coming up. And a lot of other seeds, a lot of other species. Here we go. Here's some pigeon pea, but they're nursing something else here, which I don't exactly know what it is. I think it might be a candle nut. But there's a there's a lot of different seeds in here um, to ensure succession keeps going right out to 200 odd years. And if we just keep moving through that and cycling it. And let the system generate on its own the way a forest does, except we manage it quite intensively. And we don't allow a moment for succession, uh, for sorry, for senescence. We, we, um, we're in there pruning as soon as it's necessary. So shortly there will be another prune. These grevillea will be pruned over on this side too, as we plant our alley crop. And uh, as the light comes in down to this tree row, this tree row here, we will plant tomatoes in there on that growth pulse as well. So I hope I've des described everything. I'm surely missing a lot of things, but that's what it that's what it looks like. That's where we want it to be. Over here, we're preparing another pasture crop scenario. The bare soil's there, ready to uh, receive lucerne, beans, and okra, which are our target crops for summer. Very happy, very happy with all of this, the way it's working.